Soda Popinski is the ninth fight in Mike Tyson's punch out and he can be one of the most challenging opponents for newer players. The speed of his punches combined with short patterns and a wide variety of delays makes him one of the least predictable opponents in the entire game. For speedrunners though, there has always been a simple game plan. Lock him down, exploit his weakness, and don't ever, ever get your hopes up, because drunk dudes never play nice. This is the world record history of Soda Popinski. Before there were even any notable speed strategies, Soda Popinski's main weakness was known about. If you were holding down when he went for an uppercut, Soda would get stuck in the crouched position for a few seconds, and during this time, you could land a free gut punch. Landing this punch had the special property of causing the next landed star punch to instantly knock the big Russian down. Holding down to lock Soda down would later be called the crouch glitch, although it doesn't seem like a glitch at all, and is an intended mechanic for the fight. So as you can imagine, this fight revolves entirely around setting this trick up in each of the three phases in order to score three quick knockdowns for the TKO. Even with this knowledge, a time under one minute was never documented until about mid-2002 when D. Tysonator accidentally discovered the first ever sub one minute strategy, the Vodka Shock. So what did D. Tysonator do that was so revolutionary? On one particular day, Soda was just not cooperating, so out of frustration, DT began an attempt by throwing two right gut punches. Both of these punches ended up cancelling the two opening hooks, which was when he realised the only important parts of the fight were setting up the one hit knockdown and then landing the star punch. In other words, he just needed to get to uppercuts as soon as possible. After setting up the one hit knockdown, D. Tysonator can't use the star right away because Soda goes for a second uppercut. So instead, he dodges, counters once, and star punches for the knockdown. The counter punch isn't strictly necessary, but it does serve a purpose of bringing the punch counter back to a point where the next punch will garner another guaranteed star. And so DT just executed the exact same strategy for phase two. Phase three begins the same way, cancelling the two hooks and locking Soda down for the first uppercut. This time, however, if D Tysonator dodged and stunned, Soda would end up dodging, so instead, he cancels the second uppercut and buffers the star. Soda would also be able to dodge this, except for the fact that he tries to perform an attack just as it's about to land, so it's undodgeable. With the Vodka Shock, D Tysonator was able to set the first ever known world record at 56.48 seconds. While DT's fight might have been the very first to go under a minute, it's also possible that he didn't even get the best luck. Soda opens each phase with a pair of hooks, which is always guaranteed. After that, it's a 75% chance to go into uppercuts. The chance of getting uppercuts after hooks in all three phases is about 42%. If Soda goes back into hooks, the attempt is absolutely over. On top of that, before uppercuts, Soda has four possible delays, each 25% likely. This means the odds to get the best possible luck is only one in 151. Strategy-wise, D. Tysonator's fight looked pretty good. In fact, it looks like he used every resource at his disposal. Hearts are not a factor in the speedrun for almost every fight, except Soda Popinski. You're given only eight to start the fight with, the fewest in the entire game, and DT ended up using seven of them to speed through Soda's patterns. Phase three was his fastest because he also canceled the second uppercut, something he didn't do in phases one and two. But even if he wanted to, he couldn't, because he would run out of hearts and be unable to fight back. D. Tysonator's Vodka Shock would stand as the premiere strategy for about three months. Just before the end of 2002, Chrome Virus, another top MTPO player back in the day, invented another soda strategy that had some unseen potential, the Russian attack. This strategy was very similar, but it did have some strengths and weaknesses compared to the Vodka Shock. Instead of cancelling the opening two hooks, Chrome Virus intercepted them both with right face punches. This was a little slower than the double cancel, but it also saved him two hearts, which meant he could cancel the second uppercut in each phase. It was such a simple switch around that allowed him to save time overall. There was a pretty annoying drawback though. You will notice that several of the punches in this fight don't give out a star. Every single one of these could be a random star, and for once in this game, random stars are something we don't want on this fight, 
since we get enough guaranteed stars, and each extra animation wastes just over half a second. Each of the three phases in Russian Attack are completely identical, and in this fight, Chrome Virus was very likely able to get the fastest delay for each uppercut, and finished with a new world record time of 52.48 seconds. The Russian Attack was definitely a little quicker than the Vodka Shock, but the burden to get the best possible luck was much greater. Not only were the odds 1 in 151 to get the fastest uppercuts, there were 4 50% random stars that should be avoided. Given how bad these odds are, it's very hard to say whether Chrome's 52.48 looked like the fight I recreated. The next record would be set only a couple of months later, but saving more time with the Russian attack would be next to impossible as the odds to get the best luck were around 1 in 2400. It wasn't a bad strategy, but just an incomplete one. Vodka Shock avoided all random stars and used up all but one heart, while Russian Attack had 5 hearts left over and 4 potential random stars that should be avoided. I think you might be able to see where this is going. The hidden potential for the Russian Attack lay within Vodka Shock. Just cancel more punches. This jump in logic to create the perfect soda strat isn't explicitly documented anywhere, but it's the only one that makes sense to me. By cancelling both hooks in phase 1, and the second hook in phases 2 and 3, you always avoid every random star, get just enough guaranteed stars to execute the fight, and have just enough hearts to cancel every unnecessary punch from soda. Whether the developers had intentionally designed the fight like this, or it's a happy accident, it really is great when every tool at the puzzle's disposal gets used in an extremely neat and satisfying way. With the upgraded Russian attack, Chrome Virus was able to cut the record again to an astonishing 50.25 seconds. So how good was Chrome Virus's execution of the upgraded Russian attack? Well, by the time Matt Turk came to snatch up all the records in mid-2003, he was able to bring the record to just under 50 seconds, shaving off only a few frames to get a 49.97 using the same strategy. Alright, so even Matt Turk could only save a tiny bit of time. I guess the next question is, how good was the strategy? When the first task dropped at the end of 2004, we could see that there was some more time that could theoretically be saved, but not much. The biggest time saves came from how they performed the crouch glitch. I mentioned that in order to lock Soda down to hit the punch, you need to be holding down, which also causes Mac to block. When Phil and Janisto did the crouch glitch, you don't see Mac block at all, and then he hits the gut punch. What they had done is isolated the single frame that Soda checks if down is being pressed on, and pressed it only for that frame. After that, they punch. For Mac to begin blocking, down would need to be held for a minimum of two frames and this saved time in each phase because coming out of the block animation takes up a little bit of time. Aside from this, there were a few other very minor time saving tricks that saved one frame all over the place. They reordered the phases so the double hook cancel happens in phase 3 instead of phase 1. This allowed them to get the star with face punches on the second hook of phases 1 and 2, and getting stars with the face punch is one frame faster than a left gut punch. This also meant they had to manipulate not getting two random stars on the crouch glitch in both those phases. There was another trick they did on the two hook intercepts. By letting go of up on a particular frame, they were able to buffer the punch instead of delaying the minimum one frame that humans had done. Finally, the hook cancels were done with left gut punches rather than rights, and the uppercut cancels were done with right gut punches. I'll explain why they did this later, but it does go against the standard theory of left gut punches are always faster than right gut punches. The reason DT, Chrome and Turk cancelled the hooks with right gut punches even though they knew they were slower was because there was a 25% chance a left gut punch would whiff and kill the attempt. Phil and Janisto's fight had a lot more under the hood than what met the eye, but still, it was only able to get a time of 47 seconds flat, less than 3 seconds faster than Turk's world record. Overall, Phil and Janisto's tasks wouldn't really be able to help runners get lower times. With the standard fight odds already at 1 in 151, most of the tricks either offered too little time save with too great of a risk, or were simply too precise to actually pull off. 
It would be much easier to save time by just executing what they were already doing, but better. Still, it was about three years before Matt Turk improved the fight again to either a 48.97 or a 48.82 in mid-2006. Over the next four years, Matt Turk would begin his quest of hyper-optimizing all of the fights in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. There had been quite a bit more knowledge on the ins and outs of the game since the Phil and G TAS, and it showed on the Soda fight, because on the 17th of May 2009, Matt Turk now claimed a Soda Popinski time of 46.48 seconds, half a second faster than what was previously thought possible. By the end of 2014, the Soda Popinski world record was the only one that hadn't been tied or outright beaten. The three top players at the time were Sinister One, Zalad One, and Brandon De Silva, and not a single one of them were even close to Turk's 46.48. Everything pointed to a gap in the theoretical knowledge about the fight, and to find it, they looked at the task that Turk likely took inspiration from, a Delicart's 2006 tool-assisted speedrun. The major upgrade they found was that Adelicart used a completely different method to perform the crouch glitch. There was a duck involved, and somehow, this allowed him to hit the gut punch sooner than Phil and Janisto. Sinister and Zalad would have tried to replicate this, but it just wouldn't work out. There was something they just didn't understand about the crouch glitch. Eventually, Zalad asked MTPO's newest Tassa, McHassett, about how the trick worked exactly, and the answer was pretty complicated. Everyone had been locking Soda down before punching. Even Phil and Janista, with their frame-perfect way of preventing the block animation, locked Soda down before the gut punch. It turned out that this wasn't true. You could punch before Soda checked to see if down was being pressed, and then start holding down after your punch was already going off. This would also mean you didn't need to press down for one frame, because Matt could not start blocking if he was already punching. So what was the duck for? Well, it was mostly just a convenient move that timed out when to begin pressing B. If you began the punch too early, Soda would block before the lockdown got initiated. There was another small finicky thing about the whole trick though. You needed to release B before holding down. When Soda checks if you are pressing down, he also checks if any other buttons are being pressed. If they are, then the lockdown doesn't work, and he uppercuts like normal. Five years after Matt Turk got the 46.48, Zalad finally knew how he did it, and on the 24th of January 2015, he booted up his stream for some Soda Popinski world record attempts. In general, IL world record attempts can be a bit of a slog to watch, as the sheer amount of RNG just means constant resets, and he preemptively warned his viewers that he would be resetting a lot. I already screwed up. <laughs> I... I have to. Sp yep. All right. Hopefully, when whenever the, he decides to cooperate, I should get a 15 phase one. Things were going about as well as planned for the first 10 minutes. Not only had he not gotten the luck to get past phase one even a single time, he had botched several attempts. But hey, he didn't really expect much else. On attempt eight. He did hit his first crouch glitch for a 15 second phase one. 15! We got one. And then another one on the same attempt. Oh shit. Okay. Alright. Um. <laughs> Was it all about to come together? One in 151 odds in just eight attempts? Surely not. What? 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 <laughs> Alright. Unfortunately, this wasn't a world record, but somehow Zalad had managed to pull off the strategy in just 8 attempts. But that's kind of the bad thing about it. Over a long enough time period, his luck would even out. And since he wasn't able to get the world record on his lucky 8th attempt, how long would it be before he got the luck again, and would he be able to execute well enough to take down Turk's final record? Over the next few days, Zalad began to have a few doubts about the feasibility of beating Turk's time with this strategy. If this was the exact way Turk had done it, then he had performed it extremely well. 
The duck was a very clunky move to use, and because it involved performing two separate inputs, it was difficult to perform consistently, and it was a spot where bleeding a ton of frames was likely. It was a good idea though, since you needed something to time the gut punch, and you were going to press down later anyway, why not have your thumb already in the correct position? Jack Wedge was another old school punch out runner from the early 2000s, and now in 2015, he was just getting back into the game. He had seen how much development there had been since the early days, in particular, all the buffer strats everyone had been using to time their punches. He realized that the duck actually did nothing aside from timing out the gut punch, and it was this old way of thinking that had led everyone to thinking down needs to be pressed before soda uppercuts. That's when Jack came up with his new move, the screwdriver. Instead of ducking, by buffering a slow right dodge, this allowed him to land the gut punch in the earliest possible frame that would allow the crouch glitch to work. Everything about this trick was just better. It was a little less awkward to perform, and it was consistently faster since no frames were wasted. With Jack's screwdriver cutting out three major points of time loss, Matt Turk's final record would fall soon after. Only a few days had passed since Zalit had lucked out with his 46.82 in just 8 attempts. This time, he was certain that he would not be so lucky. His attempt counter climbed up, and up, and up, until attempt 54 when this happened. Soda's being real nice, suddenly. It's kind of strange. Oh fuck. Okay. 31, that's not great. <sighs> oh my god, dude. Is that it? Is that it? Holy shit. Holy shit. No fucking way. Yes! Holy shit, it's fucking done! It's fucking done, dude! Yes! 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 It had taken Zalad only 46 more attempts to get the 1 in 151 luck a second time. His execution wasn't quite perfect, as his goal was to just beat Turk, and he was making sure to not do any inputs too early. Jack's screwdriver had completely changed the game on Soda, and with it, Zalad was able to cut the record by a single increment, down to a 46.25. Over the next 18 months, there wasn't much drive to continue improving the soda fight, which is typical as people's focus on specific fights in this game is like fashion, ever changing. Eventually though, in October of 2016, interest began to brew for the soda record to be taken lower for two players, Brandon De Silva and Summoning Salt. The goal for both was to take the fight into 45 second territory, this wouldn't need anything drastically new, or any of those tricks that saved one frame here or there. The only thing both runners would be doing was trying to execute tighter than Zalad. Salt got to doing attempts first and was marred by an extreme drought and luck. A week and a couple of 100 attempts had gone by and Salt hadn't managed to hit the 1 in 151 odds. Brandon was still in the practice stages, but he would regularly post videos of him getting luck as good as Zalad's. When Brandon finally got to doing attempts, he was quickly able to complete a fight with a time of 47 seconds flat, and then another with a time of 46.82 a week later. Just a few days after that, on October 13th, Brandon struck first by tying Zalad with a 46.25 of his own. Meanwhile, Summoning Salt was 400 attempts deep and was still waiting for his first triple screwdriver fight. Salt wouldn't get dissuaded by his bad luck, and two days later, he finally broke through. In true Salt fashion, all he needed was one solid attempt, and it turned to gold. He was able to break the Zalad and Brandon tie by completing a fight with a final time of 46 seconds flat. He was happy with the new world record, but also frustrated that he didn't get a 45. Salt was tired of grinding the fight, and he didn't want to endure another 500 attempts of bad luck so his quest for the elusive sub-46 stopped there. Brandon on the other hand was not getting anywhere near as poor luck as Summoning Soul, and remained motivated over the next month. Who knows how many more triple screwdriver fights he was able to get, continuously inching his way closer to the sub-46. 
20 days after Salt's record, Brandon would become the first person to break the 46 second barrier. Got it! World record! World record, baby! Woo! By maybe only one or two frames, he had scraped a final time of 45.97 seconds. With the 46 second barrier broken, attempts at lowering the record any further totally disappeared. There were only a few frames left that could be saved with better execution, or using some very minor trick, but this wouldn't be easy. Brandon tried to lower the record again in 2018 by switching to left gut punches on two of the cancels, saving one frame each, but lowering the odds to about 1 in 268. Unfortunately, his execution was a little slower elsewhere and only managed another 45.97. Nearly three years after Brandon set the world record, I managed to pull off a triple screwdriver fight for myself and tied the world record at 45.97 using the standard 1 in 151 strat, which I was very pleased with. Until the next day, when a massive breakthrough in the soda fight was discovered. Just a week prior, Lucando158 had solved the most annoying fight in the game, King Hippo, and his randomness was completely shattered. Now, it was Soda's turn. Not only did he find some RNG manipulation, he figured out why Salt had gotten such bad luck compared to Zalad and Brandon. I mentioned before that after the initial two hooks, Soda has four delays with each one being 25% likely. This is technically true when you look at the raw odds, but in practice, it doesn't work like this at all. The four possible delays are actually made from two separate move timers, and timer 2 only starts ticking after timer 1 is complete. For simplicity, the combinations are short short, short long, long short, and long long. The thing about the RNG in this game is that when it's left on its own, it cycles in a very predictable way. You may have heard that every input gets tallied by the game inside of a scrambler, and the game uses this to, well, scramble the RNG to make it unpredictable. What I'm exactly talking about in the case for Soda's two delay timers is that if the scrambler doesn't change at all over the duration of timer 1. In this case, it will end up always causing the opposite delay on timer 2. In other words, you would only ever get the combination of short long or long short. Never the best delay and never the worst delay. What Luke Kandor was able to map out was that when you buffered a slow right dodge for the screwdriver, how long you pressed right is completely under your control, and this can affect how the two timers interact. He found that by aiming to hold right for exactly 16 frames, you would always end up switching the delay for timer 2. In other words, as long as you got the correct delay for timer 1, you would also get the correct delay for timer 2. Releasing right after exactly 16 frames can be tough, but the manipulation works in such a way that for every frame you're away from the magic 16, the minip works only slightly less. When Salt described how he was performing his right dodge, he explained that he was holding it for a relatively short amount of time, and he was accidentally greatly worsening his chances at getting the correct delay. While this manipulation is pretty limited as we can't affect what the delay of timer 1 will be, or whether he hooks or not, just simply being able to control timer 2, the odds come down from 1 in 151 to just 1 in 19. Being more confident in getting the required luck more often gives you the liberty to play more aggressively, and this was proven on the same day that the RNG manipulation was found, as Lucanda was able to break the world record using two risky left gut punches to save two frames, and achieving a final time of 45.82 seconds. The burden to overcome the RNG hurdle had been drastically lowered, and many strategies that were considered novelties were now seriously being considered to save even more time. Nearly four months after the previous record, Lucando was ready to lower it again. Remember those frame-perfect up-release face punches that Phil and Janisto found? Well, it was about time that these would be put to practical use. Lucando removed one of the left gut punch cancels in favour of having phases 2 and 3 having these difficult face punches. This strategy in theory is slightly less random, but probably 3 or 4 times more difficult and would only save 5 frames, but it was enough for him to lower the soda time from a 45.82 to a 45.48. Lucando's fight was absolutely incredible as Adelicart's task time for soda was a 45.25. He was just mere frames away from perfection. 
Well, it would have been, because in 2013, McHazard had come out with his own TAS and showed us how good a soda fight could truly be. This fight honestly has some crazily difficult and random techniques, and to make it worse, each one doesn't save very much time at all. Just to illustrate how big of a gap getting from a 45.48 to the TAS time of 43.48 is, Lucandor's fight had odds of about 1 in 25, whilst the TAS odds are 1 in 202,357, and this includes the human doable RNG manipulations. By the grace of God, out of all the nonsense in the soda TAS, the thing that saved the most time was also the most doable for a human, and Lucanda was able to put it into use for his next world record. Instead of cancelling the first hook with a regular gut punch, what you could do instead was raise Soda's guard, gut punch and then repress up to make it misdirected. What this does is confuse Soda's move timer to keep ticking longer than it normally would, allowing you to cancel the first hook 6 frames earlier. This trick is exceptionally dumb to not only pull off, but to even practice. You needed to release up, gut punch and then repress up within a 4 frame window. Your gut punch must not take place more than 1 frame after up is released, and to top that all off, even if you do everything right, the trick only works 25% of the time. When it does fail, it's nearly impossible to see if you did something wrong, or if you just got unlucky. Lucanda was able to use this small time save to cut the world record down by another two increments. Just a few years ago, no one really thought a soda time would ever reach below a mid-45, but as of April 2020, the record was now on the cusp of breaking a new second barrier. Ultimately, this is where Lucandor left the soda record and he would move on to other ventures. Over the next year, no one was even attempting to take top spot. Brandon, myself, and another runner, Hefe Man, were all tied in second place with a time of 45.97 seconds, nearly an entire second behind Lucandor. Hefe Man wasn't usually much of an IL guy, but the soda fight had caught his attention. Over the next two years, he would continue to lower his personal best until he couldn't bring it any lower without learning how to do the early hook cancels. Hefe Man says learning how to do the early hook cancels was one of the most difficult things he's had to master in the game due to getting very little feedback to whether you're even doing the inputs correctly. With guidance from Brandon, Lucando, and Zalad, over the course of an entire year, he was able to finally get the hang of it and start using them in attempts. Would he be able to get the record though? Definitely. Lucando had only done a single one to open phase one, then he had played the fight without any extra time saves. Hefe Man was going to go for the trifecta, one in every phase. On February 11th, 2023, Hefe Man was able to get the first ever attempt into phase 3 with the clock at 29 seconds, definitively on world record pace. Luck was not on his side though, as he lost the 1 in 4 cancel immediately at the start of phase 3. A month later, he had another shot, and this time, he successfully cancelled the hook but he got the bad delay on timer 1 for the screwdriver. He was just a 50-50 shot away from a new world record. Hefe Man didn't give up. Another month later, he had one more shot. Compared to his two previous ones, this wasn't his best as he only went into phase 3 with the clock just barely ticking over to a 30. But with Soda finally dishing out the luck, Hefe Man was able to set a new world record of 44.82 seconds and is still the only person to go beneath the 45 second mark. The chance for Hefe Man to hit the strat he was going for was just 1 in 1696, a long, long ways away from the 1 in 19 strategy that Lucando had used to set a time just 1 second slower 4 years prior. While there is still time to save on this fight with better execution, I'm a little hesitant to say whether anyone has a serious shot at taking the time very much lower. The task for this fight is less than 2 seconds faster, and yet, the gap from where Hefe Man is and that seems insurmountable. The other tricks are similar but require even stricter inputs than what is required for the early hook cancels. Even if you were to pull the inputs off correctly, each one of them is only 25% likely to work and that's why the TAS odds skyrocket to less than 1 in 200,000. No one has ever seriously even tried to incorporate these into attempts. Yet. But Zalot, upon request, has shown they are possible to do for a human.
thanks for watching.